Right, I felt we're live and on online now. Okay, thank you. Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Philip Torrey and I'm a Community Resilience Coordinator for uh, Victoria State Emergency Service and I'm based at the uh, Mulgrave office and I'm responsible for the central region or the Melbourne metropolitan region. Um, before I start, I'd just like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land um, and uh, pay my respects. Uh, first up, uh, I'll give you a, a quick background on myself. Um, and the title of my presentation uh, being um, Embracing Traditional Owners, it's not techni technically correct. Uh, the pilot project I've been working on is uh, basically a pilot project with uh, a, an Indigenous group, uh, so not necessarily traditional owners. It's the, a baby step or a small component on the way to us engaging with traditional owners. So I just want to clarify that. Uh, and to give you some um, uh, information on my background as to why I'm uh, uh, dealing with this, um, I have a police background and basically I was a police officer in Queensland for 20 years and I uh, had a lot of uh, community engagement and, uh, experience in dealing with Indigenous people in far north Queensland as a police officer. And in my role here in the Victoria State Emergency Service, I uh, do a lot of uh, cultural and linguistically diverse community work, as well as uh, general community engagement for VICSES in promoting our key messaging. And most recently, I've been asked to um, uh, commence a pilot project with Indigenous people in the central region area. So just a little bit about me, there you can see some old photographs up there in Queensland as a police officer. We had lots of crime up there, you may find that hard to believe. I know Cairns is promoted to a lovely tourist place, but there was lots of crime up there. And so during my time there, I um, dealt with a lot of Indigenous people on many varying, um, aspect, over many varying aspects and situations. And so I'm not claiming to be an expert on the Koori people, uh, far from it, but I have tried to transpose some of my skills and knowledge from my background into the current role and try to impart that knowledge to our volunteers uh, in the SES and today in CFA as well, uh, for those of you who don't have any knowledge, um, in trying to uh, commence engagement pr processes with Koori people. And just like to point out that um, the word Koori the people I have dealt with so far to date, uh, for instance, at the Mullamullam Indigenous Gathering Place, um, they are not uh, representative of traditional owners per se. They are uh, representatives of the Indigenous people from varying backgrounds, including uh, Torres Strait Islanders. And those people that I have dealt with are happy to be referred to as the Koori people. But I just want to make it clear that not all Indigenous people refer to themselves as Koori people. And um, the, the word Koori is generally a term used to describe Indigenous people in Victoria and parts of New South Wales, whereas a general term to describe Koori people in far north Queensland, where I used to work, uh, is the Murray people, M-U-R-R-I. So I just make that clear. Um, and so the, the community that I've dealt with that I'll talk about in my pilot project are various members of the Koori community who are happy to be called uh, Koori people uh, who come from all parts of the Ringwood, Box Hill, Maroondah area uh, at the Mullamullam Gathering Place. So uh, just a little bit of background for you. Uh, on the 24th of March in 2011, the, uh, all Victorian government departments were committed to developing Aboriginal inclusion action plans. And I'll, I'll just flick through some of the basic points. We won't read it all out for you because there's quite a lot of reading. But I tried to put as much information into the slideshow if you, so that if you need to refer to it at a later date, you can do so on the USB. Okay, and so some of the main points will come up. 
The word dignity, I think, is quite important there. I'll just bring them all up. I've got to press the letter in to keep bringing them all up. Now, the, the, the bottom point that just slid up, um, providing opportunities for Aboriginal people, ministers and departments to form relationships and actively engage with one another, probably is where I came in in this new little pilot project that I'm talking about, uh, is to try and actively engage with Indigenous people in the Marinda area. Now, the way I did it was, um, in my role, I recently came back to Victoria State Emergency Service from the Department of Justice where I was working in Consumer Affairs and I was asked to, to um, start work on this project without much knowledge of the Koori people in my area at all and so I started doing research and that's what led me to discover the existence of the Mullum Mullum Indigenous Gathering Place and um, uh, it's at East Ringwood. I made contact with the manager, Les Chessels, and um, explain to him basically no no agenda the, no agenda from us the only thing i'd like to do is come along and meet everyone if possible as a as a ses person and see if i can start a relationship ultimately to engage with the the Koori people there uh, and to impart from my perspective our our key core safety messages and get the Koori people involved in their own personal safety in relation to storm flood and tsunami and earthquake which is our key messaging and so that bottom point, I think, was probably a very relevant for us. Now, the legislation. Um, this rec I, I put this legislation in just to sort of give a background. The Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander People's Recognition Act 2013 came into force in March 2013. It was due to expire this year. Uh, a bill to extend that, that act for three years was passed on the 6th of March, and so that, will, that act will now expire in 2018. And so... That I think uh, the, the Indigenous people I've spoken to to date, including some members of Reconciliation Victoria, find this legislation extremely important in the um, process of the uh, Indigenous people being recognised. And ultimately, the aim is to have a referendum and get the key port, uh, parts of this legislation into the Constitution. And it's a huge stepping stone for the Indigenous people. And, there, and I'll bring up the three main parts of that recognition law. You'll see there um, that first point, recognition. Acknowledges continuing relationship. And the last one there, the Parliament on behalf of the people of Australia acknowledges and respects the continuing cultures, languages and heritage of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. And so um, respect, dignity and respect are the two key words that I've taken out of these points in my liaison and my uh, engaging with the Koori people. And as I said, I'm no expert on Indigenous people. I just have had experience with Indigenous people on, in various formats and I'm learning as I go. The acknowledgement I gave at the beginning, even though there was a, a, a welcome at the very beginning, we, uh, as part of our um, ultimate goal to have a Korean Inclusion Action Plan or Aboriginal Inclusion Action Plan is to, that we will do the traditional welcome, the appropriate one, wherever we are when we do a public uh, session. And this is my second one. The first one was half an hour ago in the other lecture. So, uh, and it was good that Rebecca was in there because I was able to consult with her after the lecture to see if I can um, improve or um, uh, rectify any comments and she's very helpful in that regard. Uh, Rebecca was the Indigenous lady that did the welcome earlier today. It was very nice meeting her. Um, okay, so we commenced our Koori Engagement Pilot Project this year by me, as I said, finding out about Mullum Mullum and then getting in touch with Mullum Mullum. Uh, and Les, the manager, they refer to themselves there at Mullum Mullum as the mob. And a mob being a collective group of people from various Indigenous backgrounds, as I said, including Torres Strait Islanders. And uh, my goal was to form a relationship with the people at Mullum Mullum and uh, ultimately uh, get us to a stage where we're good friends, basically, with the Maroonda SES unit, which was formerly known as the Croydon unit. So what the next stage, will, and then the next stage, after that, sorry, will be uh, stage two, we're looking at commencing a similar pilot project in Darabin 
uh, local government area with the Northgate SES unit. Now our counterparts, the CFO, they have already launched their Corey Inclusion Action Plan on the 28th of May. They've done a lot of work uh, in developing their plan. We're behind in that aspect at the SES. We haven't developed ours yet. As I said, my pilot project is only a tiny little component of what we would hope to, to uh, be our Corey Inclusion Action Plan down the track. Um, and the CFA's plan is quite comprehensive. You can follow the links on the CFA website to read the plan or at their display at the far end of the building, they have copies up there. And um, the basic key components of their plan is uh, systemic inclusion, data service, data, service delivery and emergency management, Corey volunteerism, employment, training and economic participation, and communication, engagement and partnerships. So they're the, the key areas that the CFA hope to uh, improve upon with their plan. And it's a very comprehensive plan, very well put together. And they uh, have an excellent video that they made with various um, CFA brigades, including Indigenous CFA volunteers. And um, I would, 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 if you haven't seen it, I would recommend you watch it. Found it very educational and, um, uh, and inspiring, uh, the people that they interviewed in that video. So. Um, um, a lot of commendation from me to the CFA for doing all this work already and as I said VIXS are in the process and we have a lot of work to do too. Our inclusion action plan will be from a state level as well whereas I'm just concentrating in the central region. Okay, um, that's the Mullamullam uh, Indigenous Gathering Place logo and I was, I was telling a quick story about Mullamullam um, uh, sadly, the lease where they are for the gathering place is expiring and they have to uh, find accommodation somewhere else for their uh, community meetings and gathering. And um, uh, the place where they are leasing at the moment in Ringwood East is... Um, the lease hasn't been renewed and they, uh, as a result of, of the owners wanting to sell that place for you know, several million dollars, obviously, and that's their prerogative. Unfortunately, the Mullamullam people have to find somewhere else to meet, and some of the engagement that we've uh, done with Mullamullam, excuse me, is um, assisting in their fundraising. And I'll tell you about the trivia night shortly. Um, so I've already discussed making the initial contact. Uh, my first actual contact was then as a guest at a community lunch and at Mullamullam they have a community lunch every month and anyone's basically welcome. Any other agency and and, I, and, and the first one I went to there was some other agencies there, there was a, the Victoria Police were there and um, in a very casual um, uh, friendly environment and I made a point of going not in an SES uniform, um, we have a blue uniform that we can choose to wear at events. Nothing like that, just went in very casual uh, attire and no agenda, I just wanted to be real and, and honest with the people and, and try and, um, I suppose, get a foot in the door from, a, from an SES perspective and that approach did seem to have an impact in, in my favour and uh, I was able to start building rapport with the, with the people that I met on that day. I spoke to them about what we do and it was interesting that uh, the majority were honest with me that they didn't know what the SES did. Um, they basically assumed that we had something to do with fire. And I do find that, and a lot of SES people find that across the board, that um, communication, in communication and community engagement, that when they speak to members of the community, we're associated with fire. And that's not a bad thing, it's just that we'd also like them to know what we actually do do. Um, and because it, uh, it is a fact that we do support the CFA and NFB and other, other, other activities as well. Um, so following on from that very first meeting, and, and I was honest about, because uh, one of them said to me, you look like a cop. And, um, and a couple went, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and I said, well, look, I'll be honest, I was a police officer. Um, and, um, and in my engagement activities in this type of field of work, I often cross, come across other ex-police officers. Um, <laughs> uh, and I think we're good at this role if we apply ourselves because of the skills we've picked up in policing and we can adapt them and transpose them into the roles that we're in now and so I said yes I was a police officer and I had to be honest uh, and I told it at the other talk 
that I did earlier that in my role as police officer, I did make a lot of arrests. Um, when I first went to Cairns in Queensland, I made 100 arrests in six months, in my first six months up there, because crime is rampant up there, even though it's a lovely tourist place, as I said earlier. Um, and unfortunately, um, or not unfortunately, but as a matter of fact or course, of, uh, I did arrest Indigenous people along the way. And me personally, I find arresting people not um, enjoyable or anything like that. And it was through those dealings and experiences and many other positive experiences that I, I gained an appreciation and an understanding of Indigenous people at, at a basic level, from my level, um, but the key words that I mentioned earlier in my slide, respect and dignity, uh, something I always maintained as a police officer in dealing with everybody, and I've ho hopefully brought that along today uh, to re-emphasise to, to you people who may be dealing with Indigenous people are trying to engage with Indigenous people on whatever level that respect and dignity is paramount. And I find, for me personally, in my engagement activities, respect and dignity for everybody, treat, t treating people with respect and, and dignity, indignity, not just uh, Indigenous people but everybody, helps get me further in my role. I may not always appear that way, but I, I do try to adopt that. And me personally, it works. And so I've done up a little list later at the end of the slideshow, just as a guide from my perspective of how you'd go about commencing engagement activity as a volunteer if you haven't uh, any knowledge on how to do so. Uh, so the next part of that engagement with Mullum Mullum, they invited us to partake in the Koori Jobs Education and Family Services Expo, uh, and that was held at the Gathering Place February this year. As I said, this is a new little pilot project, it's baby steps towards the bigger picture. Uh, so we did partake in that, and so what was happening was the Koori people at Mullamun starting to recognise us uh, and, and understand who we are as, a, as an organisation. Um, we participated there, it was a great day. We were then invited re and quite recently to the NADOC Family Day, which was held at Mullamun on, on July the 5th. It was a very successful day. The Marooned Unit set up a large display there with a lot of volunteers in attendance and the uh, uh, the little Koori children loved it. They lo loved being involved and once again our our, um, our profile I suppose with the Koori people there rose just another little bit. Uh, and then subsequently the NADOC ball was held recently, uh, 320 guests, uh, that was at Croydon. We um, were invited as a staff member, I had other staff members say, Phil, why aren't you going to the NADOC ball? And I said, because it's such a popular ball, we're only allowed, uh, able to get four tickets. I would prefer volunteers go rather than paid staff, which is me, because the volunteers are the ones that have been setting up the displays, doing a lot of the you know, hard yards in their own time. And so I thought it would be a great opportunity, not only for them to be rewarded a little bit, having a free night out, paid by the region, but also help further the um, relationship with the Koori people. They had an awesome night. We provided uh, educational bags to all 320 guests. I packed them myself. It was hours and hours of fun. Um, but it was a great night and it was, from my perspective, great to see um, from me not knowing anything about where Koori people are in the Melbourne metro area to having us at this ball as guests and being um, treated exceptionally well and the relationship blossoming. And then the other part of that was the trivia night, and I think there was well over 200 people at this trivia night, and I hadn't been to a trivia night before ever. I've seen them on shows, and that, but I've never actually been to one. We went as a group, uh, myself, my partner, and a whole team of volunteers from the Maroondah unit, and part of that trivia night was fundraising for Mullum Mullum's new venue, if they find one, and it was an awesome night, and there were other agencies there as well, as they were at the ball, and, um, our relationship is growing and on the night, I told it at the other talk, I had uh, two little Paddy the Platypus mascots that the SS give out. Um, I took two of them along as um, to be used by Mullamong as lucky door prizes or whatever and they ended up having a, a gold coin auction of them with a, like a quiz game set up and it was meant to run probably no more than five minutes and the crowd eliminate and get down to one and that last person gets the patties. People just kept pulling gold coins out of everywhere. <laughs> and um, 
it just kept going and the, the manager had to end up stopping it and, and it turned out that the person left was one of our people, the SES, that won them. And so he then in turn donated them straight away back to the two little Corey children that had been helping in the, in the um, activity on stage. And that went over exceptionally well. And then the following week at the meeting, at the community meeting, the gathering, Les Chessels, the manager, got up and spoke very highly of the SES and wanted to make special, special mention of that um, uh, um, gesture by the volunteer in giving those little Patty the Platypus dolls to the two little Koori children. He said it made their night and it was very well highly regarded. And so for me, that is um, a tick in the box, job well done that the Maroondi unit have got to that stage where it's all first name basis and they're getting invited to other activities. So that was how we did that. Stage two, as I said, would be Darabin. And I'll just quickly bring up a list. As I said, it's all on the USV. These are the types of activities that we would hope to um, conduct down the track with indigenous groups in the Darabin area. I've got to remember to keep pressing N. Uh, here we go, I'll bring them all up. And, and these are the activities also that we're conducting at Maroondah. And as I'll, I'll repeat, it's baby steps. We are probably well behind other agencies, but, and we are a little agency ourselves. Staff-wise, we're quite small. Uh, volunteers, you know, a bit over 5,000 statewide, but staff-wise, we're barely pushing 180. So we're only a little agency in that regard, but we're trying. And these, as I said, are baby steps in, in getting to that bigger picture of uh, um, full-on uh, Aboriginal inclusion. How's my time? Uh, one minute. One minute. Is there any questions? And, and I'll, just flick, I'll just flick through the rest while you're watching. And as I said, it's on the USB. I've basically covered most of what I said that you'll see come up. Any questions or, or comments or feedback? Where is your Nolan Nolan meeting place? It's in Ringwood East, in Patterson Street. Patterson Street. Yeah, near the railway, on the other side of the railway line where all the shops are. Uh, and my colleagues, no one knew it was there. I'd, I found it just by research. Um, not to say other agencies didn't know it was there, it's just that we didn't know it was there. And um, uh, now we do, and they know who we are, and it's growing, and it's just one little part of our bigger picture. Uh, and as I said, CFA have already done a lot of those hard yards already, and we're trying to uh, follow suit. Is any other? Is this helpful or? Yes. Yeah. Oh, good. It's very similar to yeah. Yeah. And, and and I wasn't looking for any accolades or anything about what we're doing. It's just part of the the role. But I was asked to come along today because it's something we're looking as a bigger picture down the track. And so by no means is this uh, the answer to everything. It's just a little part and hopefully maybe some part of it is helpful to you. And as, and as you can see there, I've just typed in a list of suggested um, measures that you can do in doing your um, uh, engagement with Indigenous people. And, and I want to clarify once again that the title of this presentation um, it actually is not correct in the embracing traditional owners uh, in that I haven't done that. We haven't embraced traditional owners. We've just done a pilot project with an Indigenous group who are, in this case, the Mullum Mullum Indigenous Gathering Place. So uh, that, that, I didn't create that title. I just want to clarify that. Uh, and so if that's it, I will finish up. I'll just go right to the end of the slideshow for you. Like I said, it's, uh, it's all on, on the USB that you'll get. And it's just some helpful hints in consulting, planning, implementing and evaluating a project. And I'd leave, I'd finish up on the, on the note that when you are evaluating a project or when you're doing any part of the project, those keywords I found work for me and hopefully would work for you is uh, respect and dignity. Uh, remember to have respect for the people you're dealing with and treat them with dignity. And um, thank you for your time.